This is the photographer guy yesterday. He was really nice. Hey, is everybody there? Can you hear me? Hello. Hello, hello. Jake, can you unmute yourself or do I have to? No, I unmuted it. Awesome. Sweet. Who else we have? So we got you. Who else is on? Oh, we got a handful of folks here. It looks like Gwen's here. We've got Rich here. Carrie's here. Mm -mm. Can you see everybody who's joined, Jake? I can if I scroll, so I've got it. Oh, okay, I was gonna say I don't know how to how to do that. We're gonna figure it out. It's over there. There's a little scroll button on the right hand side, top or bottom. Okay. Underneath the pictures, the fancy pictures, or you could change it to talk version. Yeah, we're gonna have some fun. Okay. Or gallery. I am. Even better. Um, oh, it is recording already. Okay. Well, how about that? We're good. Sweet. I'm going to see if I've got my document. Fun. Well, how's everybody doing, by the way? Woo! Good? Good. Real good. Real good. Awesome. Yeah. You know, are we enjoying working from home? Yes. It's a good thing. It is a good thing. So there's a couple of things that we'll talk about today. We'll have some fun with it. Um, if you hear my dog in the background, I apologize. Working to get all that worked out since I'll be doing a lot more of this now. Mm -hmm. And we'll have some fun today. So tell me, what is, what are you all hearing? What's going on in your neck of the woods as far as uh, the market? Or how's the market responding to all of this? What are y'all seeing? What are y'all hearing? You know, I'm I'm hearing um, I'm hearing some reports right now that um, buyers are wanting to wait mm -hmm. a couple of weeks. I want to just wait a couple of weeks and see what happens. I don't know that I want to go out this weekend. I I just want to see what happens. What would cause them to say they want to wait? Um, you know, I think some uncertainty, uh -huh. not knowing what's going to happen in the future. So uncertainty about the future, what happens there, jobs, all that fun stuff, right? <clears throat> what else would cause them to want to wait? I think they're scared. Yeah. And, and here, that's the interesting piece. I think that's the key word, is, and, and that's something for all of us. So it's that fear thing, right? So let's, talk, let's, let's dive into that concept for a second. 
and then we can talk about how do we coach them through it, how do we have the conversations through it. So where does where does fear come from? What creates fear? The unknown. Yeah, it's the uncertainty. It's the unknown. It's it's that not knowing what's coming down the road, not knowing what's happening next. The reality, and not to take it too lightly, and yet I don't care what's going on in our world. Everything could be perfect, and and we could live in fear, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, I mean, feel free to take yourselves off mute. We'll, we'll have this conversation together. And yet, that's, I think that's the biggest opportunity is when you look at it. I mean, I, ha- I get on an airplane almost every night. I could tell you I could live in fear every day of whatever's going to happen on that airplane, whatever I may contract on that airplane, whatever, you know, you name it. And yet, is that going to do any good for the next, my next step? Right, because what the other thing that we can understand, and this is just we're talking about more of the understanding of what fear does. What happens when we when fear consumes us? How do we respond? Run and hide. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Shelter yourself. We run and hide. We kind of chill out. We kind of we kind of hold back. Um, we put our head in the sands. And by the way, this is for all of us. So it's a great conversation for us all to have, especially in this moment, because is there a little uncertainty in our world? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's correct. So, so how do we take and understand, how do we control it, right? Because that's the other thing. How do we take something where, where fear could consume us or uncertainty could consume us? And how do we, how do we work through whatever that belief is, whatever that perception is that may be positive? Well, for me, I, I don't, I, I'm not letting this run my day or run my show um, because I know where my source comes from and I know where I'm going if I go. Exactly. So, so, so regardless, you know, uh, this doesn't bother me or sway me or make me agitated at all. Yeah, so Rich, so because you, you, have, you operate on that faith and you have that understanding, you're leaning into your faith to, to allow you to move forward. Correct. It's awesome. And by the way, I think the biggest key to what you're saying, even outside the faith thing, for those who may not operate at that same in that same realm, is activity will take us away from fear and show us opportunity. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's <clears throat> that's the biggest key. Now, here's the flip side, and this is something I've been talking about with the leadership team about, is if you follow this process. There's this little world that we live in where, where we create perceptions. And, and what is a perception? You know, there's a handful of us on the call today, 10, 12 of us on the call. If we walk down that path and we each have our own perception, whose perception's right? Mine. <laughs> all, all of them. Right? Every single one of us. Yeah. And the reason is because my perception's created through my own reality. Yeah, they're valid to us. And they're valid to us, exactly. And we have to understand that they're valid to us because of that concept. Now, here's the cool part. How do we help people who may have a different perception modify the perception? Try and coach them through it, I guess. Yeah, so part of it's coaching them through it. There's a real couple of key pieces. So the first thing I think that we need to do is we need to approach it non-judgmentally, right? So if our buyers are in fear in the moment, they're right. And they have a reason to be there. Does that make sense? So we've got to meet them where they're at. Hey, you know what? I completely understand with everything going on. Tell me more about that. Okay, I have one for you. Um, Our listing was supposed to go live on the 21st. Uh And she wants to postpone it a couple of weeks because she's concerned about this everything shutting down and all the stuff going on. Cool. So tell me more about everything shutting down and everything else going on. That- well, her daughter, her daughter goes to school with my daughter, Ralston Valley basically shut yeah. down as well as all the schools yeah. In, yeah. in Jeffco. So she's concerned that people aren't going to be wanting to view her property. If we go live on the 21st, Interesting. that would be our first. Yeah. That, that was the perception today. So her, uh, her concern is, isn't that she doesn't want people to come through the house. It's the opposite. She wants people to come through. 
Yes, she needs to sell. Yeah. So, if so she, she's if she's very concerned. To sell, Rich. What? What? Why does she need to sell? Tell, tell me what's the reason behind that. Uh, she's upside down a little bit. She's uh, struggling with her payments, and she's just ready to get out of this house and get into a condo that she can afford. Got it. So this has more to do with her finances than anything else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what is waiting a couple of weeks going to do for her? That's what I, I haven't had a chance to talk to her. Jana did. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk to her face to face because I want to see yeah. the reaction um, that I'm going to be getting from her real time. Right. I, I don't want to hear it on a voice text or I don't want to hear it on a phone call. I want to be face to face because I want to see the reaction because yeah. I want to talk her off the fence and give her some reassurance that, you know, um, waiting a couple of weeks really is not going to help us. Yeah. It's going to hinder us because we need to get you gone now because a couple more weeks is a couple more hundred dollars that you're going to have to come up with down the road. There you go. Well, and by having that conversation, meeting her there, that's the key. So the, the challenge that we face sometimes is we walk in and we go, well, I know why you need to list your house. Just trust me. And, and yeah. we, we want to put our, our understanding and place that on their shoulders and, and allow them to take that. The reality of it is they typically are in a spot where they're going to accept that willingly. So we have to walk them through that process. And that's where it's just asking questions. So going down this path, now that, now that I know the background, I would say, okay, so waiting a couple weeks, how would that help you? Let's just do a, uh, let's just do a, a, a pros and cons list, right? How would it help you if we waited a couple weeks? And I, I let her list off all the stuff that would help her. By the way, I might throw some things on there just to get her started to show her that I'm not necessarily taking one side or the other. We're just going to check this out and see what's best. So how to help you, you know, it may give you a couple more weeks to prepare. It may give you a couple more weeks to, to spend some time with the kiddos. It, it may not cause you to have that, that disruption because now the kids are home, whatever, what else, what would it do to help you? And let her walk down that good, list. Does that make sense? Good question. Good question. And then I, I was just literally on the other side of the paper, because we're doing this in person, I would ask her, so what are the facts? And let her walk through all the things that could happen. And by the way, because you prompted her on one side, you now have earned the right to prompt her on the other side. <clears throat> and then you're able to look at the lists. And now right. she gets to make a choice based on knowledge and based on facts, not based on emotion. Correct. I think she's emotionally let, she's ready to let go of this property. I know her daughter has some type of diabetes and she's really concerned with uh, that scenario, which kind of entailed, put her on the waiting fence uh, to see what was going to happen and go on like the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, pardon me? I said, I would dig deeper because sometimes what the first response they give you or the first objection they give you isn't the real objection. Concur. It's, it's a conversation that we have in, in coaching where we talk about this thing called, it's called smoke versus fire. And, and what happens, I mean, think about a firefighter, if he walks in and he just chases the smoke, you may never put out the fire. So it's, it's right. finding out what the source is the concern that then allows you to work through that in that same way. And that's another method that will help you do that. Let's pick pros and cons, which list, you know, at the end of the day, which list do you feel would be more beneficial? Yeah, we, we told you, I, I was talking to Jan about this. I mean, we can do a hand sanitizer thing at the front door. Everybody's got to wear booties. I mean, just try to make it, you know, as safe as possible to make her feel comfortable. Completely. And, and here's what I love about this conversation, and this is why I, I trust you guys are all here. Listen to this. When you start, so I was just on the East Coast, I was up in Toronto, and I was in, in Jersey. And I, when I flew in last night, um, it was weird. The Newark airport was like, I think I texted Anna speaking, and it was empty. It was empty. And there were triple sevens Boeing 777s that were parked out, uh, out in the distance because they couldn't fly because they didn't want to get them stuck over in Europe. 
It was the weirdest thing. And yet that's what's going on over there. So when I, I was coaching them yesterday, they're already at the point where because of how it's spread and how rapidly it's spreading, they're at a point where they're saying, hey, our buyers don't want to, our sellers don't want to do open houses right now. Our buyers don't want to go to open houses right now because of the amount of people that could be there. So how do we make that a win? And it was really fun because it gave us the opportunity in our malleable bowl that we have today to start thinking outside the box. So in this situation where we may have a seller that says, hey, I'm concerned about people coming into my house or I'm concerned about this. So let's wait a couple of weeks to see what happens. What could happen in a couple of weeks? Her house could get sold. Yeah, it could be sold. <laughs> right? That's simple. And, and, and here's the flip side. Interest rates could pop through the roof again because who knows what's happening in that world. And then all of a sudden the buyer you once had no longer, you no longer have. Um, so there's all sorts of things that we've got to be cognizant of that are out of our control, that are truly out of our control. And yet not, not allowed to be something that, we, that drives us through fear. It drives, drives us through that, that to have a, a sane conversation around those, that dialogue. And it's not, about, it's not about convincing somebody. They've got to convince themselves. So our job in all this, I'm going to share with you a, a quote. Um, Cody Gibson posted this, and I love it. And we're, we've been using it. Um, he and I have talked several times today and have done some training on some other things. And what he said, I'll find it. Um, and it's a great point for us because is it true that our, our buyers and our sellers and our sphere, for that matter, during times like this could also stick their heads in the sand? Mm -hmm. And and sometimes we need to be that light in the darkness. We need to be that guide for them. Um, I sent this off to, to your leadership as well. And it was, um, let me find it. Where'd it go? You have that quote there, Anna, by chance? It was one about the flashlight. There it is. It says, as leaders, we need to stand with a flashlight where the darkness is and show the way. It's okay if we don't 100% know the way. We know where the very next best place is to step. So shine the light there, step, and help someone else do the same. We're all better for this experience. Grab a flashlight. <laughs> cool. And, and I think sometimes that's where we can show up. And, and so let's, let's change this dialogue just a little bit because how do we have that type of conversation with our clients? You know, this is no longer a conversation of, hey, I'm in a contest. Do you have anybody that can help me, that I can, that I can serve? This is more, we, this is an opportunity for us to reach out. And it's what we call a care conversation through that, the, the dialogue. And really what you're talking about is you're, you're calling in, you're saying, hey, how are things going? You know, so the first conversation is about, I care about you. I'm calling you because I care about you. How are things going? The second is about action. You know, is there anything I can do to support or help you in this time, during this time? And by the way, that's not selling real estate. That's, do you need groceries delivered? Do you need, um, you know, I've got, a, I've got a box full of hand sanitizer. Do you want me to bring one by? You know, it's literally, it's all that kind of stuff. Um, it's that dialogue. Hey, do you know of anybody else who may also need help? Because we're equipped to, to do so. So you're not asking for a referral for business. You're asking for a referral to help somebody out. And it's being just, genuine, real. It's truly being genuine in this moment. And, and that's the value that we bring to our databases. And, and the opportunity we face in this moment in these crises is, is that we can get to dig deep. We get to connect in ways that we may never, we haven't connected lately. Or because of how hyperactive our market's been, it's been easy for our, our, our database to go, you know what, if I'm thinking about selling, yeah, I've got Rich, or I've got Angela, or I've got Gwen, and I could also reach out to Zillow if I don't want to deal with the headache. Well, Zillow right now is not calling them to say, how are you doing? Zillow's not calling them to say, I care about you, and right now probably isn't the right time for what you're looking to do. Or 
hey, have you thought about investing? Because I'm telling you right now, in the next 60 days, there's going to be some opportunity. Are you ready? And building out that type of a conversation as we pull people from fear and into opportunity. And give them a little well, So rates are low. What's what that? about refinancing? Oh, exactly. So is refinancing the opportunity is where, where are those opportunities outside of us just helping you buy or sell? Yep. Yeah. So Anna just posted the picture of it in the, in the chat. If you want to pull it up, I'll post it on our group Facebook page too. Um, as we wrap this call up. So those are the key pieces. So how do we take somebody from, from their own perception and help them modify that perception. The first step is to meet them where they're at. We've got to understand their story. So we're asking questions. We want to know what's going on. And those questions start, if you draw a triangle, I'll teach you the question triangle. We do this all the time. If you draw a triangle, I'm going to show you my handy dandy white pad. You see it? <laughs> yeah. So if you draw a triangle and you break it up into four sections, this is what we call the power of the question. Um, there's a question that we'll lead with often, and it's this question that starts with why, right? So a lot of times, the very top of that triangle, you're gonna put the question why. We lead with why. And some people tell us, well, this is what I feel. You know, I wanna hold off for two weeks or whatever. And then instead of us asking a, a powerful question that creates a dialogue, what we do is we say, well, why? Tell me more. Why would you like to, why do you wanna wait two weeks? Here's the challenge. When we ask a question like that, what does it automatically do to the person we're talking to? Defensive. Yeah, they get defensive. They put up a wall. Mm -hmm. Well, now I've got to defend my, my decision. Well, we might even agree with them. However, because of the way we responded, we didn't tell them that. So the, the key to the whole questioning concept, especially as we take somebody from that victim mindset, from that, that fear, from that that perception that they may have today and into a different perception and into a different state is we have to start with powerful questions. And powerful questions typically start, you see the base of that? You may not be able to read it because it's Jake Scribbles. Um, starts with the word what? So instead of asking why do you want to wait two weeks? That question could sound like this. What's important about waiting two weeks? And they give you the, they'll say, well, this, 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 or this. And you say, awesome. And what does that do for you and your family? What, tell me what's, what does that mean for you? And you're just going to continue down a what, a what dialogue. And the purpose behind that what question is it creates a bond and it creates a unity. It says, hey, I'm paying attention. I'm here to help. Tell me more about the situation. Another way to say what could just be tell me more. It's a simple statement that creates more of a dialogue and draws out a deeper answer. Because otherwise, think about it this way. We have our own perception too. So if somebody says, hey, I'm gonna wait two weeks, and then we pull in our own perception of, why do you wanna wait two weeks? Because I know what's going on and I can help you. However, we hold back and we pull in that own, our own perception, we could influence the whole conversation based on our own perception. So our job is to ask open-ended questions without judgment to find out where they're at and then we can meet them where we need to go. So as we put all those pieces together, you start with a what? And then the next question is how, right? So in this dialogue, once you start to get through the what of two weeks, what's important about that? What will that do for you? Tell me what's, what are you looking for in those two weeks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then you get to say, well, okay, so how will us waiting two weeks help you? And how will waiting two weeks hurt you? And that's where we get to take that same dialogue and go into pros and cons, right? That's another way to build out your pros and cons list. And through this conversation, they'll start to self-discover what's going to be right. We, our job through this conversation is we may also self-discover what's right, and we may discover that they're actually right. So we can't be committed to our course of action either in these dialogues. Once you get through how... The next layer is who and when. So now you're going from a, a broad base from what 
to the how, to the who and the when. You get more, much more specific all the way up, and then you get to why. And why is, again, it takes you all the way back into, so, so tell me, why is this all important to you? Blah, 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 great. So if we wait two weeks and we can still achieve all these pieces, would that be, would that help you achieve the goal? <coughs> Excuse me. And they say yes. And off you go. Or, so if we were to create a plan, go back to motivation, that allows you to sell the home today without having 22 families come through the door this weekend, would that help? And would you be more comfortable? And they say, well, yeah, how are you going to do that? Well, great question. Let's talk about what that could look like. Does that make sense? So part of it too is us giving alternative solutions that they may not know, be aware of or know exist as we move forward. So what are your thoughts so far? Got a bunch of you on the phone. I love it. How do we, how do we implement this and how do we apply this today? Having real conversations. Yeah, this is all real conversations. And it's conversations that lead with your heart not with your wallet. Yeah, we're, it's, it's all about building a relationship. It's not about the monetary value. It's all about building that relationship because we plan on her using us for the rest of her life. So that's fine. Exactly. And, and, the, and these are, this is where those relationships <coughs> So, I mean, I've still got great friends from 2009 that we helped through one of the toughest times of their, of their life. And to this day, they still call us. They still bring us Christmas gifts. So it's, it's, this is where those relationships are established that go much further than just real estate. And that's the opportunity that we have today in this market. So here's a challenge I would give you all. Have you thought, how do we take our listing virtual? How do we take our open houses virtual? How do we take our, 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 our tours to a virtual level? What are the tools, what's the technology that's available that we can leverage in, these, in the states to get that piece put together, right? How do we do, I mean, let's, I'm throwing stuff out there. I don't have the answer to the how, so just know Jake's a thing. I, I'm a, I, I'll throw all sorts of it's just this easy's out. Anna and, and Angela love when I say it because it's so much true. Okay, it's just this easy. All you have to do is, <laughs> it's an awesome idea, I promise However, think about this idea. I don't know how to do it, but we'll figure it out. I know we have a great system through command where we can, I mean, Anna, what are you averaging per, per lead right now? What kind of costs are you seeing come through the door based on the people you're talking to? See if I can unmute here. Can there you hear me? Okay. Yeah. So, um, so I'm, I'm, uh, um, my average is just over a dollar a lead right now. I've seen some, some ads at 61 cents a lead. So through Leader Accelerator, we can maximize our exposure ineffectively or in, inexpensively. Mm -hmm. um, so what if instead of printing the flyers, getting the cookies, getting the, the, you know, the, the, the fun hoo-hahs for an open house like we normally do, you take that same 25 bucks and you roll it over into online, you know, an online lead generation type of setup. And then we do the same conversation. We're going to do a, a virtual open. We market the virtual open in order to get access to the virtual open. Or if you want early access, um, you have to click and register. Does that make sense? So now you're capturing the data. Mm -hmm. And then you hold a virtual open. And maybe it's Saturday from 10 to noon. And the key to that, that virtual open is it's, you've gone through the house and you've walked through it as a buyer would. Right? So you walk in, you, you take it some time on the curb appeal, you walk in the front door and where do they typically go after they walk through the front door? Kitchen. The kitchen. So you go to the kitchen. Well, if that's a gorgeous kitchen, maybe as you turn the corner and you give them the broad view of the kitchen, a pause, and I, again, I don't know how to do this. So this is Jake just going out on dream mode. <laughs> However, we could create some type of landing page that pops up that says, you know, just like on YouTube, because you watch 30 seconds of YouTube ad, and then what shows up? An ad. An ad. Now it's only a 10 second ad, and yet five seconds in, you can click it, and we all know what the ad's for by the end of five seconds. Same conversation, 
how do we do the same thing where in order for them to see the kitchen and the rest of the tour, now that you pique their interest, they just have to click there and pop their information in, which is simple through a Facebook ad because it pulls all the data from the Facebook ad, from their Facebook account. Now they've got access to the whole thing and you're doing through the, for those two, two and a half hours, what you're doing is a live, um, you're doing a live stream. So they can go back and forth with you, ask questions, click the whole nine yards, and you're there actively engaged through that process over those couple of hours. Could we do that type of purpose? You utilize that as a, as a way to create a little more interest, to drive the opportunity to create more opportunities for us and potentially garner an offer without anybody stepping a foot in the house. Pretty slick. You know, so it's just, it's how do we think outside the box in a market like today, where, where in the event that it turns into something like that and the hysterics open up, we've taken the time to prepare. And we've got these plans in place, or at least an idea of what we can put together so that we can then take that to our clients. Or we do some type of tour like that where somebody says, hey, I want to go see the house. And you say, great, I'm going to send you this video. And here's the video. By the way, if you'd like to write an offer, feel free. And then if the offer is accepted, you'll have five days to go walk the house. So the only people that walk in that home are people who the sellers accepted an offer from. Based on price point, that might work. Am I cuckoo? What do you think? Absolutely not. I think it's brilliant. I'd love to take credit for it. I stole it from somebody out in Jersey. They brought it up. <laughs> Score. <Hey>, let's go. <laughs> so, go Wouldn't ahead. that be so awesome right now, too, to be prepared with that video and um, approach approach people in our database with it, too, right? Oh, yeah. Do we have investors who are looking? Do we have others who we're not necessarily working with right now or who haven't reached out to us on an ad? How can we prospect based off of having that video, right? I went and toured this home. I think it might be perfect for what we were talking about six months ago. Take a look. Exactly. And, and we do, where that came from, kind of the conversation started is we do a lot of that on my team with our investors. Mm -hmm. So most of our, we've got a, a handful of huge investors out of Hong Kong. We've got a, 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 a bunch of investors out of the DC area. They never even step foot in these houses. So most of our showings, it's us sending them the information. They say, yeah, I'm interested in that property. We go take a look at the house, do a video tour of it put it on, on, a, on a Google Drive and send them the video tour. And because we've done that video tour, now they have it, which gives them the ability to take a look at it, ask questions, all that kind of stuff. If we can connect while we're in the house, we'll do it through FaceTime. And that way, as we're doing it through FaceTime, if they want us to back up, or if they want to look closer to a couple of different areas, we can do that as well. The other thing we'll have to start doing if we go to this path is we will have to put floor plans together. And I know we've got some, some phot photographers and stuff like that that will help us out with floor plans. And that's just important so they get a, a, a visual feel of it as you're walking through and showing them the property. They get to see kind of how that layout looks. So a lot of this is gonna be how do we help them create this reality in their head and see themselves moving into this property before they've even walked through it. And here's the cool part. As we take advantage of these opportunities, as we start to think ahead, is this stuff that can help us after this market shifts? Oh, yeah. And that's the cool part about it. We had, a, we had a mastermind here at the office the other day, too, and a couple of things that came out of that um, um, I'd love to share. Um, one of the suggestions was changing the name of open house, right? So you're not holding an open house anymore. You have a, you have a showing or a viewing window. So from 12 to 2, you have a viewing window on this property. And that could be you yourself in that house. And you could be scheduling like five-minute um, um, 
one-on-one -on -one walkthroughs with prospective clients or with prospects during that viewing window, right? So you can, you can book yourself out and then you can, you can do live tours with them so that they can ask questions and do all of those pieces just like they would an open house. And, you know, you gain entry to that system by, um, you know, by a lead capture form, right? So you're getting all of their, their information. Maybe you're doing it, um, you know, maybe you have some other qualification to get on your five minute calendar for, um, you know, in for that viewing window or something like that. But um, um, I thought that that language around it was pretty, pretty slick. That's huge. Well, and, and here's the other piece that's really interesting to all of this is um, as we get better and better at this, it's going to give us the opportunity to pick up both the buyer and the seller. We're going to start to see more double ended opportunities, which again, maximizes our, our, opportunity through that process as well. Because a typical sell buyer will have a property to sell at some point, <laughs> be it then or later. So, all right, what are you taking away from today? Was it worth it? Quick 30 Absolutely. minutes? Absolutely. Thank you very much, by the way. My pleasure. My pleasure. Now that we're kind of playing around with this format, that's the other thing that's fun. We might be able to do this a little more often than what we typically have scheduled. So I'm gonna take a look at the schedule and see if we can't just do this type of format and do it more regularly for you. What do y'all think about that? I'm in. Yeah, mom. Hey, go get it, have fun, tell your story. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, Gwen. See ya. See ya. <laughs>